In this video, I'm going to put together and stock a 3.8 gallon Pico tank all in a single day. I'm going to start with a dry tank, add and rinse some live sand, glue together an aquascape using some old and some new rock, and then add some corals within a few hours. A few weeks after setting this tank up, I give you an update on how the tank is doing, and then I'm going to review some of the changes I made after the first day setup. So stay tuned and enjoy. So I'll be honest up front, I'm not doing this from scratch. I'm pulling rock and coral out of my main display tank, making the one day build possible. Otherwise, I would do a full cycle and then slowly add livestock. I got this Lifeguard Aquatics 3.8 gallon peninsula all in one. Came as a kit, so comes with a 50 watt heater. Comes with an LED light, full spectrum for planted tank. So I'm not gonna use this. Bio balls, algae scrub pad, I think for cleaning the glass. Plumbing accessories. The pump is actually the Lifeguard Quiet One Pump. So it's a that's an off-the-shelf pump to replace it. And then it's got foam pads for filtration. So, so yeah, it's a really nice tank. Low iron glass, it's got nice clear seams. Overflow into the filtration bank, and then this is the return. I'm not gonna run this as a peninsula. I'm gonna run it like this, so it'll have long ways with the clear back. That will give me more in-tank space versus their traditional square-ish tank, so can't wait to get this set up. So this little 50 watt heater that comes with, I was looking for the temperature gauge and then it doesn't have one. I look at the instructions and apparently it's set to run at 78 specifically, which I guess is fine. My display tank is set to about 77. It gets up to almost 78 in the evening. So my it almost never runs the heater on my display. So I'm guessing this heater probably will rarely turn on in the summer. This is gonna be a three plug setup heater return pump, and then the Kessel light. I'm gonna start filling this tank. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the live sand. I believe I've used this before and I, I think it washes out pretty clean. So I'm gonna add it straight to the tank, fill it with tank water from the tank right here. Um, if it's cloudy upon first fill, I'll just take all the water out and add more because uh, I'm doing this in conjunction with a water change on my main tank. So I have 20 gallons to work with to fill a 3.8 gallon tank. Uh, so I got plenty of tank water. Um, so I'm gonna add this now. I don't know if I'm gonna use all of this. I just want a, uh, a thin sand bed just because I like the look of it, but I don't really want to add too much height. I think this tank is only just shy of eight inches tall. So any, if I put in like a two inch sand bed, I'm only working with six inches. So I really want a very fine layer on the bottom. So I'm going to add a little at a time. Actually, that might be all I need. Yeah, I think that's all I want in there. Let's add some water. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna kick this sand up, get it nice and rinsed out, and then I'm gonna pull that water out, and then I will fill it back up again. And then anything after that, I'll put in a poly filter to kind of polish it out, but that doesn't look too bad. So the sand has been added and rinsed. I rinsed it twice just because I have plenty of water. Uh, I now have the return pump running, and then I have a sponge and some poly filter in the first chamber. I threw the light on just so you can see how clear it washed out and it washed out pretty clear for new sand. So um, I'm gonna let this run and I'm gonna finish my water change and then I'm gonna start adding coral. So these are the first inhabitants. These are some Recordia Florida rocks. And some of these were shaded. Kind of see some of these are like totally bleached out. So hopefully those will recover. I'll kind of keep those off to the side so maybe they don't get so much light. Plop this one in here. It's 
And then as I get the other structure, so right here, I'm gonna have a little aquascape to put some leather coral on. And then as I get that set up, I'll kind of rearrange some of these recordia to either attach to that or kind of work around it. I'm gonna steal this rock out of my display tank that the Ghanis are on. That's gonna be the main live rock to cycle the tank. And then the Ghanis are just gonna be on the ground, which I've been wanting to do anyways. So there's the rock out of the display tank. This rock's been in my system for a long time, so it should be very well cycled. This is some of the rock that I'm gonna work with. My goal is to get, I don't wanna go too high because leathers grow up, but I also wanna have something dynamic. So I might have a few pillars coming up, but have most of it kind of low to the ground or low to the sand bed so I can put leathers on it and allow them space to grow up. So I'm going to try and see what I can come up with here. I ended up gluing a few smaller pieces together to make some nice structures. I ended up with an arch and a shelf um, along with some extra space along the perimeter of the older rock. This is probably not the final scape, but I'll see how it looks once I add the leather corals. So my camera was running when I started to move the corals over and when I pressed what I thought was record, I ended up hitting stop. So I don't have the film of me moving over the actual other corals, uh, but you can see here I've added them to the tank. Um, I'm not sure if this is gonna be their final resting spots, but I'm gonna let them kind of do their thing and see how it looks. So this is the day after, everything's settling in fine. Still waiting for some of these leathers to open. This one is open, this one has not. Recordia look good. I ended up making this nice arch, which looks pretty cool. And then that's a spaghetti leather that's gonna kind of grow out the top. So that will look good from back there, hopefully. And then I'm thinking of either putting mushrooms on this arch or some zoanthids. I have some other coral that I'm gonna to add to this too, but I wanted to see how these went for a day or two before I add more. So the pump that comes with this tank is 80 gallons per hour. I took off the nozzle here, so it's just a, a flat return. It looks like it's pumping out some water at the top, uh, but the corals aren't really moving too much. So this is 80 gallon per hour, and then I ordered a new pump that will fit the chamber that does 200 gallons an hour. I don't really know how powerful these Kessel A80s are on smaller tanks. So I want to measure the par to make sure that I get that sweet spot of 150 micromoles for leathers. I think leathers do well in some higher light, but I don't want this small tank to be a super high energy tank. So I think the 150 micromole par will be a sweet spot. On larger tanks, these Kessels are not very powerful. I've seen people complain that two of them won't light a 40 gallon breeder, but on a Pico tank, 15 watts is more than enough. Since I'm not running the spectral controller to control this light, my method is gonna be to dial in the color of the spectrum that I like first, then adjust the intensity knob to hit around 150 micromoles of par right at the top center of the shelf. I'm gonna run this through my main tank's apex, but only to turn it on in the morning and then off in the evening. So right now, I think I have it at about 65, 70%. So let's see where the part is right here in the middle. And I'm running about 92. And let's turn it up a little bit. 140, let's go down a little bit. Right around 130. So I think that's where I want to be. So I, went, I made a mark here on the color and then on the intensity. So that way if I mess with the knobs and turn it up or down or make it more blue, I can set it back to where it was and know that it's the right spectrum and the right par. So for 
fun. I want to crank this up to 100% both color and intensity just to see how powerful this little light is on a four gallon tank. So turn the intensity all the way up, turn the color all the way up. And right at the surface underneath, I'm getting 220. And that's with maybe eight inches off the water. So anyone that says that this light is not powerful, uh, it's definitely powerful for a smaller tank. So it's been a few weeks since I set this tank up. I moved some of the leathers around. This spaghetti leather it was in the back corner. It was kind of, you know, back here. It didn't look very good back there. Most of it was blocked and it was already reaching this, the uh, water surface. So I moved it in the back, moved this green leather up here and then move the Koji Pink Neptia down there. It doesn't look too good. It dropped a branch, so I don't know if that's gonna make it, but I'm not too worried about it. It is what it is. This neon green Capnella down here is a new addition. Um, I really like that. I might have another one on the way as well, um, along with the toadstool. Other than that, I added some nice zoanthids. So over time, those should cover that arch. Uh, I may add a few more of those. The Recordia look pretty good. They're starting to color up actually in here. I do about a 50% water change every week. So yeah, very happy with that. Very happy with the light. I changed out the pump from an 80 gallon per hour pump to, I think this one is, I think 200 gallons an hour. And I have it full, full bore. So it's really pushing water compared to the 80 gallon. I'm actually getting some movement in my leathers. The only downside is, I mean, you can see the water levels right at the top. So if I put my hand in the tank and move it around, I'm gonna splash water out. So uh, not too big of a deal because I'm not gonna put my hands in the tank too much, but it looks pretty good. So there you have it, my one day Pico. I would not recommend this if you don't have another tank to do water changes or pull rock from but a small tank like this is certainly possible and not that hard if you know what you're doing. I may add a few more corals here and there and I need to do something about the cords coming out the side, but I will keep making update videos for this as well as my main tank, so stay tuned.